Hi, I'm Astronomy Magazine Associate Editor Bill Andrews. Welcome to Tour the Solar System. In this series, we give you an overview of the objects in our stellar neighborhood. This video focuses on Neptune, the most distant planet from the Sun. Yes, despite the objections of fervent Plutophiles, the International Astronomical Union's demotion of Pluto to dwarf planet status in 2006 means Neptune once again has become the farthest planet. It's a distinction the planet already held for 84 years, between its discovery in 1846 and Pluto's in 1930, and again for another 20 years from 1979 to 1999, when Pluto's eccentric orbit put it inside Neptune's orbit. Neptune lies about 2.8 billion miles or 4.5 billion kilometers from the Sun on average, and it's some 31,000 miles or 50,000 kilometers wide, about four times as big across as Earth. A day on Neptune lasts just over 16 hours, and a year there takes almost 165 Earth years. Because of its distinctive deep blue coloring, Neptune was named after the Roman god of water and the sea. But don't be fooled. That pleasing hue comes not from vast oceans of liquid water, but rather an atmosphere of hydrogen, helium, and some methane. Under certain atmospheric conditions, white clouds can appear, likely made up of ammonia, water, and hydrogen sulfide. Neptune's atmosphere also features some familiar characteristics. Cloud bands, like the belts and zones circling Saturn and Jupiter, as well as tremendous storms, like Jupiter's big red spot. In 1989, Voyager 2 observed the great dark spot on Neptune's southern hemisphere. However, unlike the Jovian big red spot, Hubble observations just five years later revealed that the great dark spot had disappeared, and that a new one now raged in the northern hemisphere. Astronomers are still unable to fully explain Neptune's quick changing atmosphere. Also helping set Neptune apart is its ring system. Sometimes visible in ground-based observations and sometimes not, the Voyager 2 mission confirmed that at least five rings wrap around the planet. The outermost one is named after John Cooch Adams, the British mathematician and astronomer who predicted the existence and position of Neptune in 1845. This odd ring divides itself into regions of significantly higher density, called arcs. This is the only known instance of such an occurrence, and it is these clumps that make the rings only occasionally detectable from Earth. Neptune's biggest moon, Triton, has also been a frequent object of study. It's the only known large moon to have a retrograde orbit, meaning it orbits in the opposite direction that Neptune does. This implies it's a captured member of the Kuiper Belt, a region of various bodies orbiting farther out. Triton is also one of the few known moons to have any geological activity, and it's one of only four known to have an atmosphere, the others being Saturn's Titan and Jupiter's Io and Europa. Astronomers have observed changes occurring on Triton's surface over the years, likely linked to its changing seasons. Observant viewers, or anyone who will read the credits, might notice that the bulk of our information on Neptune comes from the Voyager 2 probe, which passed by several decades ago. Unfortunately, Neptune's vast distance from us makes it a difficult object to explore. Astronomers plan to learn more by studying the planet telescopically. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the eighth planet, one of my personal favorites. We'll continue our tour of the solar system in upcoming videos. Make sure you check out issues of Astronomy Magazine, too, which often include news and articles about solar system objects. See you next time.